Well, I didn't think I'd do it, but I did. I bought a, what I consider a cheap guitar because I was so curious watching uh, Philip, Philip um, Knight or McKnight's channel where he said that you can get a great guitar for, uh, for under $400. I have always been an absolute skeptic on that. I've always believed you could get a good guitar and I think we're in a lot of ways in the golden age of guitars. Um, but a great guitar, I, I don't believe that you can get a great guitar for 400. So I just purchased this yurt, um, this Ert. I have, um, prior to turning the video camera on, I cut the box open and tuned it so that it wouldn't um, take time of editing because I'm lazy like that. And, uh, and so let me walk through my impressions on this, my first impressions on this guitar. Um, and I'll compare it to this guitar on, uh, on my left, your right, which is a Paul Reed Smith, David Grisham, which is my number one guitar. For context, I tend to play uh, higher end guitars, that Les Paul Standard. That's a 1961 Epiphone Zephyr, mini humbuckers, absolutely killer, uh, grimy, dirty tone that isn't offensive at all. It's, you know, it's just a beautiful grimy distortion if there's such a thing, those two words shouldn't go together, but with that guitar they do. So fantastic sounding guitar, um, cool. Obviously this is a custom shop. You can't see this, that's a custom shop, um, 57 Strat. So those are the kind of guitars that I play um, because I'm old and I like uh, great instruments uh, because I don't, um, because I don't like settling. So, um, but, so here's the Yurt, 400 or $380 shipped to my door. Let's plug this thing in. So the first, the first thing um, that I noticed with this guitar is the um, the burling on the wood. This wood is really, really nice. Uh, you know, certainly as nice as you know, any guitar with this type of design that, that you will see, you know, it, it's natural, but, but it's very, it's a very fine finish on it. The back end, uh, nice appointments, fork bolt neck, multi-piece neck. Um, I did notice, um, just right when I pulled it out, I did notice that there's bleed over red right here. So I don't know if you see that bleed, but there's a small amount of bleed. Um, if that happened on my uh, Paul Reed Smith, uh, I would send it back right away to the, you know, to the dealer or the factory and have that have that fixed. I won't do that with this with this guitar um, because I don't really care um, um, as much about those things as I do about does it play great and does it sound great. Those are the two important pieces to me sound and and does it play great and so um just to play a couple uh you know to show some show show how the guitar plays the the fretboard um is is reasonably uh or the, the strings are reasonably low on the fretboard uh when i when i took it out of the case the first time i i thought they were too high for me to be comfortable with and i was curious whether I could get the uh, instrument to to get to a point where I was comfortable playing it from a strings off the fretboard perspective. I turned the um, truss rod, which is located right here, turned that truss rod uh, a couple quarter turns, and um, within an hour, came back and retuned it mm -hmm. up, and it's playing great now. Yeah, um, certainly as well as as any of my other guitars. So, so here's the. Here's the back uh, pickup. I don't have a picker on me right now, so I'm using a quarter. So 
the guitar sounds good. A couple of uh, a couple of um, points on that. It's it's got the humbuckers again. If you look at the got the Paul Reed Smith, you know, very similar looking uh, humbuckers on there. Um, I did compare these humbuckers with the Paul Reed Smith. Uh, I think the Paul Reed Smith is slightly more articulate, um, defining each individual string. Um, but I don't think they're significantly different. Now, with that said, do I think they're equal? No, I don't think they're equal. I, I, I when I'm going uh, to record, I'm always going to be taking that guitar because it's my number one guitar, and I think it sounds slightly better. Um, but I think. 90% of the people couldn't tell, or maybe even 98% of the people couldn't hear the difference. And to prove that, or as a, in the um, spirit of science, I'm actually going to record a song and I'm going to use both guitars and then I'm going to post it in the description below. And you can go through and see if you can tell which guitar is which. And then I'll post um, somewhere lower in the description, I, I'll post um, which guitar is playing which parts. Uh, they're really close. They're really close. Uh, and again, $400 guitar, $380 shipped to my door. That David Grisham is $4,400 or $4,500 shipped to my door. No case, case. Um, but, you know, it's it's a $4,000 plus guitar with the David Grisham versus a $400 guitar, sub $400 guitar for this one. The frets, you'll hear people talk about the frets on the yurt. And, and, and that you'll see that the frets are cut prior to the actual edge of the wood. So it's a, they're polished inside of the wood almost. Um, the fretwork is different than any guitar I've ever seen. I'm not quite sure how they do it, but it's exceptional. And, and I'm really picky about fretwork. And I can tell you that, um, this is, of the guitars, this is, at, I would say, tied with the best fretwork with the Paul Reed Smith. I prefer the Paul Reed Smith, again, because I'm comfortable with it. It's more traditional um, fret polishing on the edging, but this Ert is really, really good, um, exceptional. And it's better than the Les Paul. It's better than, uh, you know, I, slightly better than the Straddle. The Strat is great. Um, and the vintage guitars, it's better than the vintage guitars um, because, you know, you rely on luthiers, you take it to, and, and they'd have to spend a lot, a lot of time to get the polish level that um, that the Ert or the Paul Reed Smith has. So, um, I'm going to record, check the description below, check out that song, tell me if you, you can hear the difference in the two uh, guitars for... 400 sub 400 um, this guitar is exceptional you can hear how well it's staying in tune <laughs> tune great I uh, just tuned it up the one time and uh, I do think that uh, that Philip McKnight is Philip Knight sorry from get I'm getting that name wrong but he's right this is um, I think this is bordering on a great guitar for sub four hundred dollars my only complaint is this switch although it works great or fine it it feels cheap that's my only that's really the only, the only uh, knock I would have on this guitar, but I strongly recommend this guitar um, to anybody who wants a headless guitar or, you know, for young 
first players, what an unbelievably great guitar for, for someone who's just starting to play guitar. Um, kind of reminds me of the um, Japanese Squire Strats from the 80s when you could get them for 250 or 300 bucks. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's the modern version um, of, of that with the quality. So check out the, the songs. Tell me if you can hear the difference between the $380 ERT and the $4,500 David Grisham, Paul Reed Smith, um, and I'll leave which guitar is which in the comments.